All right, Mr. Speaker, big announcement today. Yeah. Um, so we'll get right into it. Why the position of Lieutenant Governor? Well, I have spent, I will have spent 22 years in the House, and uh, and I'll and I will, have, I am the longest serving Speaker in Idaho history, and I'm elected Speaker by by the other legislators, and I've had a good, I've had a good run. I, we've accomplished a lot of good things, and I've learned a lot. But in the in the as Speaker, you're elected by the House members, and as Lieutenant Governor, you're elected by all, all of Idaho. And I look forward to that experience. Yeah, and I actually wanted to ask you about that specifically. Um, your first term in the House, you were appointed, and then have won right. your local elections ever since. Now right. you're running for Lieutenant Governor. That's a statewide race. How does it, that change your strategy or your first <coughs> in the election? Well, it won't change my underlying strategy. My I've been successful in the legislature because I, of hard work. And, uh, and because I, I go and I do a deep dive in, in the subject matter, so I know what I'm talking about. Because there's nothing worse than having a politician that just kind of shines you on, you know. And, uh, and I want to be able to uh, discuss these things with my friends, people that know me, and know, uh, you know, and know that, I, that I don't just blow smoke, and that I can come well prepared. And so I think those, those habits, that practice will serve me well as I run statewide. The state of Idaho is growing very quickly, and with that growth comes some growing pains, but as we, uh, but as we go forward, we don't want to jettison any of the Idaho values that have made us so successful and that make us such a great place to live and to work and to raise our families. Great. So then, uh, what are your, prior your priorities for policies uh, going into office when you were elected? What were your priors policy priorities? Well, I have great um, background in, uh, in several areas. Education, that's going to be something that we're always going to be uh, needing to keep an eye on and to invest in. We've got to have great teachers in our classrooms. You saw that I have 14 grandkids, all that live in Idaho. All, m most of which are in public schools right now and all of which will be in public schools. I have a, a vested interest in those kids leaving our public schools with a great education. Uh, I've got great experience uh, in the legislature on the transportation uh, committee. I, I, that was my very first committee assignment. And so I've learned those issues as well and how to get to put deals together among all these disparate uh, legislators that only want to look out for their district, but we've got to come together as a, as a state and, uh, and get stuff done. I've got great background in the natural resource issues and being able to mediate very tough issues, uh, particularly in water. In fact, that's why I got interested in politics to begin with, is that the, is that the, the state of Idaho recommended my water rights to the federal government way back when. And I, uh, you know, and that motivated me to get involved and to learn and to, and then to take that knowledge and to get stuff done. I think that's what will distinguish me here is that I have the experience and I have a track record of getting things done. And I think that's what, I think that's what Idaho expects of us, all of their public servants, is to get things done, not just lip service. And then, uh, as has been mentioned a few times today, this is your 11th term in the House. You're the longest serving speaker in state history. Um, if you were elected <clears throat> lieutenant governor, you'd preside over the Senate, over across the rotunda. And uh -huh. so I'm curious how your experience in the House would influence uh, that relationship with the other body and how you would approach it coming from the executive branch rather than the legislative. Well, I, uh, you know, I have great experience in the, in the legislative branch. I would be new to the executive branch. People get along well when everyone stays in their lane. So they do their job and don't try to do everybody's job, but we just do our job. And then, they, and then people's knowledge and their abilities start coming to the, to the top. And that's where I will shine. Great. You also said today that you plan to finish your term as speaker through yes. the following session. Um, are you concerned that uh, the campaign will color the upcoming session at all, or well, do you think you'll hold that off until sine die in primary season? Well, there may be some that want to try to make it an issue. Uh, I, uh, you know, I don't see it as being a conflict. There are very capable uh, people there in the House of Representatives that if I have to be gone for a day or two or whatever, but I don't plan to be. I, I, I finish every job I start, and I've, I've started this one, I'm going to finish it. 
right. Are you prepared to serve with any of the candidates who are currently running for governor? I know uh, it's not a joint ticket, but... I, 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 again, my lane, their lane. The will, they will run their race, we will run ours, and uh, at the end, uh, I'll see whoever wins that at the other end. And should I take that to mean you're not offering any endorsements for the governor's race? I, I, uh, I'm very comfortable with Brad Little and uh, would endorse him uh, when asked. Okay, fantastic. Um, is there anything important you feel like I have not gotten to today? I know it's in announcement day, so we have plenty to talk is about. That, is that the bonus question on every yeah, at, yeah. At journal school? They teach it's, us that in school. It's oftentimes <laughs> results in the best answer. It does. <laughs> and you know what? For 20 years, I've said, no. <laughs> All right, sure. I, but but we're, we're uh, again, I think that uh, as we look back on my track record, that I, I've got the experience and the results that uh, will help Idaho going forward. I'm not doing this uh, based on any personal agenda. As I described earlier, our family has been very blessed. We've been here for a long time, and I have the ability and the chance at this point in my life to give back, and I want to do that. Uh, at the same time, we, we're facing a bunch of problems in transportation, in education, in natural resources. Well, that's where I've spent my legislative career is solving problems in those three areas and, uh, and others. Uh, tax policy as well. And those are the issues that face us as we go forward. And we, so as, we, as, as Idaho grows, we can't let it change the underlying value system that has brought us all here and kept us here and make it a great place to live and to work and to raise our kids.